In this video, we will be learning how to draw Lewis diagrams for molecules that have more than four electron pairs around the central atom. In NCA Level 3 Chemistry, you will be asked how to draw Lewis diagrams for molecules with up to six areas of electron density. If you want to revise Lewis diagrams and how to draw them for molecules with up to four electron pairs around that central atom, you can watch the video of linked in the description below. To start with, we will be looking at how to draw the Lewis diagram for PCl5. So the first step is to write the symbols for all of the atoms in the molecule. In this case, we have one phosphorus and five chlorine atoms. Then we need to write the number of valence electrons that each atom has just underneath the symbol. So phosphorus has five valence electrons and chlorine has seven. Then finally we add up the total number of valence electrons. The second step is to work out which atom needs to be placed in the centre of the Lewis diagram. This is usually the atom that needs to gain the most electrons to be stable, but if two atoms need the same number of electrons, then place the least electronegative atom in the centre. So that is the atom that is further down the periodic table and further to the left of the periodic table. In this case, phosphorus is in group 15, so it has five electrons in its valence shell and it needs three more to be stable. Chlorine is in group 17, so it has seven electrons in its valence shell and only needs one more to be stable. Therefore, phosphorus needs the most electrons to be stable, and so we place this in the center of the Lewis diagram. We then spread the remaining atoms evenly around that central atom. The next step is to draw a single line, which represents a single bond between the central atom and each of the atoms around it. This single bond or line represents two electrons. We then count up the number of electrons that we have used so far in our Lewis diagram and take this number away from the electrons that we counted in step one. So because each single line represents a single bond which has two bonding electrons in it, we have 10 electrons in total. In step one, we had 40 valence electrons. So 40 minus 10 means that there's still 30 electrons left that we need to add to our Lewis diagram. We add these remaining electrons as lone pairs around the surrounding atoms so that each atom has a total of eight electrons. There are exceptions to this because hydrogen can only hold two, beryllium four, and boron six. But for the other atoms, we keep adding valence electrons until they have a total of eight and are stable. Next, we count up the number of electrons that we have added to the surrounding atoms, and we take this number away from the total number of electrons that we calculated in step four. In this case, we added six electrons to each chlorine atom, and there were five chlorine atoms, so we have added 30 electrons in total. In step four, we calculated that we needed to add 30 more valence electrons to our Lewis diagram, and so 30 minus 30 is zero. If there are any electrons remaining, we add these as lone pairs to the central atom. But in this case, because we have used up all remaining 30 electrons around the surrounding chlorine atoms, we do not need to add any lone pairs of electrons to the phosphorus atom. Our final step is a check, and it's to make sure that each atom has a full outer shell, at least eight electrons, and all valence electrons are paired. If this is not the case, you will need to turn at least one of the single bonds into a double or a triple bond. In this case, each of the surrounding chlorine atoms have eight electrons, 
6 as lone pairs of electrons and 2 as a bonding pair of electrons. Phosphorus has 5 pairs of bonding electrons, so 10 electrons in total, so it is also stable. And all electrons are found as either lone pairs or bonding pairs, so we know that we have done our Lewis diagram correctly. For our next example, we're going to look at BrF5. So again, the first step is to write the symbols for all atoms in the molecule and then place their number of valence electrons under each atom. We then add up the total number of valence electrons and write that at the bottom. So in this case for BrF5, we have 42 electrons that we need to include in our Lewis diagram. We then need to work out which atom will be our central atom. In this case, both bromine and fluorine are found in group 17 of the periodic table. That means they all have seven electrons in their outer shell and need only one to be stable. However, because bromine is further down the periodic table, it is less electronegative and therefore we place bromine in the centre of our Lewis diagram and then we spread the five fluorine atoms evenly around the central atom. In step three, we draw a line to represent a single bond between each of the surrounding fluorine atoms and the central bromine atom. We then count up how many electrons we have used so far. So in this case, because we have five single bonds, we've used a total of 10 electrons. And then we take this away from the total number of electrons that we counted in step one. So 42 minus 10 means that there are 32 electrons that we still need to add to our Lewis diagram. We then add the valence electrons to the surrounding fluorine atoms until they each have a total of eight electrons. In step six, we count the total number of valence electrons that we have added to the surrounding atoms. So in this case, we added six lone pairs of electrons to each of the five fluorine atoms. So we added a total of 30 electrons. We then take away this number from the number of remaining electrons that we calculated in step four. So in this case, we had 32 remaining electrons minus the 30 electrons we have just added meaning that we still have two electrons that we need to add to our Lewis diagram. We add these remaining two electrons as a lone pair of electrons to our central bromine atom. Finally, we need to check that our Lewis diagram is correct. So in this case, each fluorine atom has a total of eight electrons around them and each electron is found as a pair, either a lone pair or a bonding pair of electrons. So the surrounding atoms are stable and bromine has 12 electrons around it, five as bonding pairs and one as a lone pair. And so that too is stable and we know our Lewis diagram is correct. For our final example, we're gonna look at the Lewis diagram for HCN. So again, we start by writing the symbols for each of the atoms in the molecule and placing the number of valence electrons they each have underneath that. In this case, there is now a total of 10 valence electrons that we need to include in our Lewis diagram. When we look at where each atom is found on the periodic table, we see that hydrogen is in group one, but it's one of the exceptions, so it only needs one more electron to be stable. Carbon is found in group 14, so it needs four electrons to be stable, and nitrogen is found in group 15 and only needs three more electrons to be stable. Therefore, carbon becomes our central atom because it needs the most electrons, and we spread the other two atoms evenly around the central atom. We then draw a line between each of the surrounding atoms and the central atom to represent a single bond. In step four, we count up the total number of electrons we have used so far. 
So in this case, because there are two single bonds, we've used a total of four electrons. And then we take this number away from the number of valence electrons we counted at the start. So 10 minus 4 is 6, meaning we still have 6 electrons that we need to add to our Lewis diagram. We now need to add these remaining electrons to our surrounding atoms so that they have a total of 8 electrons. However, hydrogen is one of our exceptions because it can hold a maximum of two electrons. So it already has a full outer shell with that single bond that has two electrons. Nitrogen has two electrons already in that single bond, so we need to add another six to give it a full outer shell of eight. We then need to count up the number of valence electrons we have added to our surrounding atoms. So in this case, we've just added the six to nitrogen and take that away from the number of electrons that we calculated in step four. For this case, six minus six is zero. As we have no electrons remaining, we do not need to add any lone pairs of electrons to our central carbon atom. Finally, we need to check whether our Lewis diagram is correct by making sure that each atom has a full outer shell and that all of our valence electrons are paired. In this case, hydrogen has two electrons, it's a bonding pair of electrons, and its outer shell is full. Nitrogen has eight electrons, two as a bonding pair, and six as lone pairs of electrons. It has a total of eight electrons, so it is stable. But when we look at carbon, we see that it only has two bonds and a total of four electrons. Although the electrons are found in pairs, as bonding pairs, it does not have a minimum of eight electrons, and therefore it is not stable. This means that our Lewis diagram is not correct, and we need to turn the single bond into a double or possibly triple bond. To make a double bond, we are going to take one pair or one of the lone pairs of electrons from nitrogen and turn it into a bond between carbon and nitrogen. This means that for the second bond, nitrogen is supplying both of the electrons in the bond. This is also known as dative bonding. When we look at the Lewis diagram now, nitrogen still has the same eight electrons around it. They are all found in pairs. And carbon now has three bonds, meaning that it has a total of six electrons around it. They are all found in pairs, but it still doesn't have a full outer shell because it doesn't have eight electrons. Therefore, we need to turn another lone pair of electrons from nitrogen into a bond, making it a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen. Now when we look at the Lewis diagram, hydrogen has two electrons and is stable. Nitrogen has eight electrons, six found as bonding pairs in that triple bond and two as lone pairs. And carbon now has four bonds around it, a triple bond and a single bond meaning that it has eight electrons and is finally stable. And so this is the correct Lewis diagram. Next week, we will be looking at how to draw Lewis diagrams for polyatomic ions. So make sure you subscribe if you want to be notified when that lesson is released.